I'm going to turn on airplane mode. <laughs> of course, the camera. There we go. Wow. How do we this look? Is, <laughs> this is very new. But actually, I saw also the evolution of your studio. Yes, it's changed a lot. It changed a lot. Like, like when I started, it was just in my living room. But I think that uh, people in the beginning, they were very judgmental, at least for me. Mm -hmm. Like, where's your foam and where's your all yeah. of that? Yeah, and, yeah. And I saw that you put foam as well. Yes. You're even covering your heater. Yes. So what do you do <laughs> in the winter? <laughs> we're covering it just, just. I don't know. It looks better than the wall behind the, <laughs> the foam. But you have some plants there, too. I was thinking about plants, but I think I would kill them. Yeah, that's my issue as well. Do you have some someone that waters them? Uh, no. <laughs> well, maybe that's a mission well, for the, the husband. Plant, the big plant is not mine. It's uh, of a friend of mine that has that one corner of the studio. So Nika. you borrow. So uh -huh. I guess she waters it, but... I think she even told me that she doesn't expect the plant to live <laughs> very long. I don't know if it's you're familiar with uh, Between Two Ferns. No. It's Zach Galifianakis, the okay. guy with the beard. He has, it's not, a, it's a, it's not a real podcast. It's like a fake interview show. Mm -hmm. And he just insults his guests. I know, I know which one you mean. Yeah, so yeah. that's what it reminded me when I first saw your studio, Between okay. Two Ferns. <laughs> but anyway, welcome to the podcast, guys. Hi. Hi. Look who is here. Hi. Finally. <laughs> we don't have a nerdy person. <laughs> I might be a little nerdy. nerdy but actually, though. you are the first woman to visit our podcast. Woohoo! Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And actually, you... I appreciate it. And you will be followed by Adela. Adela, I saw. I, I looked at your YouTube and I saw Adela and Lady Hoonigan. Yes, she's also coming as well. And actually, I'm really excited to meet with her before because i hope that i will be able to go into her car yeah yeah because it looks amazing have you seen it in person uh no not in person but i i have like i have not been actively following her but i have been following her for many years she's also somebody that's extremely surprising to me because it it's such a male niche mm -hmm. car racing yeah. and she's better than some guys yeah yeah so kudos to her. I'm really looking forward to it. And she's extremely nice. Um, one of the things that was really surprising to me, and maybe you had a similar experience is, well, you started when you were 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you had a long way before you got to your podcast. But I started a month ago. Yeah. About a month ago wow. is, is when I started to actually interview people in Everybody that I reached out to has been extremely kind. Yeah. Is that your experience as well? Most of the time. Most, not all the time. Uh -huh. There have been some people that I... Mm, it's weird because you re reach out to them and they're like, yeah, of course, of course. And then you're like, okay, so when, I have, when, when I'll have the dates ready, I will get back to you. And then they're like, oh, I can't. I can't, I can't. And it's just, I don't know. There were some people that I really wanted for the podcast, but when I don't see them actually wanting to be on the podcast, I sort of give up on them. Do you give up on them just for the time being or are they dead to you? No, no. <laughs> it's. I don't think there are many people like overall in my life that are dead to me. Mm -hmm. Like I'm always one to rebuild bridges. You are full of forgiveness because I'm horrible. <laughs> really? I'm I'm absolutely horrible. Once you okay do me wrong, you're dead to me. Really? Okay. But it takes a but lot. But that's better for you. I mean, like, yeah. for because for me, I give a chance and I give another chance and another chance and you are nice. And then yeah, I get burned. But I think that maybe it's it's not uh, not professionally for me, but I mean in my life. <clears throat> Maybe it has to do with my astrological sign. What What is your sign? So you are a believer in this. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but before we get into this topic, I see that we have 12 people watching, which is cool. Hi, guys. 
Uh, thank you, everybody. If you have any questions for Petush, please leave them in the chat. But for the people that don't know you, mm-hmm. who the hell are you? <laughs> That's very complicated. And these are the most complicated questions for me. Who am I and what I do online? Because it's such a broad spectrum of what I do and who I am. Well, <laughs> some people are going to make fun of this. I'm a mom. <laughs> I'm a mom of two. I'm a wife. Um, these are the most important things for me from of, out of everything that I am. I am. Uh, I used to be a blogger. Now I would call myself an influencer or content creator since I create different things, different versions of content instagram youtube podcasts tiktok a little bit this is so. one of the this is something that i cannot wrap my head around with you <laughs> because you have a you have a small kid you have two, your husband actually. two two of yeah. them yeah uh, and your daughter still doesn't go to kindergarten right or she one does, does. Yeah, yeah one started now in september i know the little one you said he's very talkative is he still talkative she she yeah so they're both girls yes I When have two I girls. They are both very talkative. Oh, God. They are both Geminis. Does so. your husband have a shotgun already? <laughs> no, but I told him we should get one. Not for that reason, but just to protect ourselves. <laughs> you know how boys are. Yeah. Boys are terrible. Like, I'm so afraid to have daughters. Really? I would be such a jealous father. <laughs> And it's it's extremely funny because in my relationships, I am not jealous. Yeah. Like... If I feel that somebody's going to do something wrong or or they do something mm-hmm. wrong, like I told you, Cut they're them out. dead to me. Okay. Like, I'm not going to spend any time being jealous or angry. But with my daughters. Yeah, yes. that's different. When it's your child, it's different. And it also leads me to one topic I wanted to discuss with you. And it's how we boys are. Because I look at myself and I think about my first relationship. Mm-hmm. I was a shitty boyfriend <laughs> and I've been shitty ever since. And I think it hasn't been until like the fifth or sixth time mm-hmm. that I started to learn. <laughs> that you stopped being as shitty. <laughs> okay. Why, why do you think that we boys are so dumb? Well, <laughs> I don't think all of you are. I think many of you are. And mm-hmm. I think it has a lot to do with the kind of upbringing a lot of boys have. Uh, which is also something I talk about on Instagram. Um, I think the up, the traditional upbringing for boys and girls is very, very different. And I think that's what makes mm, so many girls so vulnerable. And that's what makes so many boys kind of... Uh, what's the right word? Well, Dumb. Dumb is okay. Yeah. <laughs> But it's funny because this is a topic... Like inconsiderate would be the word I was thinking about. I would... Mama's boys too. Yeah, also. I, I uh, was in summer camp. I mm-hmm. volunteer every year at a children's camp. And, and we had this new activity that uh, one Beduzzi mm-hmm. <coughs> brought to the camp. And it was called Boys and Talks. Uh, Boy and Girls Talk. Okay. And it was just uh, about any topics that the teenagers wanted to discuss. Mm-hmm. And one of them was this exactly, that how boys are girls uh, are raised and mm-hmm. how g- girls are raised. And I asked them, okay, how, how do they treat your brother? Mm-hmm. Well, they do their laundry, they cook for them. You know, they're sitting on the couch, they don't do anything. And how do the, they treat the girls? Are they clean, they cook? Yeah. And I was thinking that a few years ago, I even read an article that this goes back to childhood, like you said. Mm-hmm. And how we are raised. And girls are more mature because from the time they are little, they're playing like with babies. They're raising mm-hmm. babies. Mm-hmm. They're playing with ch- uh, with kitchens and grown-up stuff. And boys are just <laughs> hitting yeah, it's, cars. It's the phrase. It's just the boys. It's the boys. Let be boys be let boys be boys. And yeah. Do you think that mothers are at fault? Yes. So what 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 can they <laughs> yeah, do better? Well, I think mothers and fathers are at fault because a lot of times what little kids see, both girls and boys, is the fathers not being as present, not as involved, not like it's not 50-50 in the household even though 
mother's work nowadays and father's work nowadays nowadays mm. as well the housework is very much in many families not everywhere of course very much up to the mom so that's what we see so those are kind of the you know so what what can we, we do by. what can we do better as mm, parents i think we should we should approach raising children more gender neutrally mm-hmm. like not i think there are some things that people or boys and girls automatically go to like cars and dolls and stuff but not, not me i hate i don't think it's for like the same for everyone and i hate seeing parents say no you're a boy you can't play with dolls why i call them why? action figures <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect <laughs> for example me i loved playing with cars i always wanted like an electric car or like the um, auto draha how do you call it this is the, the the car the race race cars yeah the race yeah, right yeah, yeah. like with the little yeah. remote that y- yeah those exactly are, huh? like that's w- that those are the toys that i always wanted but so i different. also like to play with barbies it's completely different to me and i think that's why i have mostly girlfriends and not mm-hmm. i don't have guy friends yeah with me it was always opposite now i have girlfriends as well really yeah i i still don't have a lot of guy friends just because i i don't relate to i mean I'm not excited about cars. I'm not excited mm-hmm. about wrestling or whatever yeah. guys do. <laughs> 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 whatever is considered a, a male thing. <clears throat> so going back to our discussion about uh, people being dead to you, I, I'm a Pisces. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm very in touch with my feelings. And I also, I, uh, I have a lot of patience, but once they, mm-hmm. I have a, You know, they have the expression that you can have a short fuse and a long fuse. Yeah. And I have that really long fuse. Yeah. But once it hits, it's like, uh, oh, okay. And rarely do I give people second chances. Mm-hmm. I mean, they really have to prove to me that they're worth it. But maybe it's a fault on my side, but I'm too old to be pretending to like people. Yeah, but it makes sense. I mean. It's also for your own uh, mental health. Yeah. So I see that we got some money already. Wow. Two euro. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max Mansell. Actually, you might know him. Really? He used to have a podcast. Okay. He was a really young podcaster. Okay. In Slovakia? Yeah. Okay. So he had some, he, and he used to work for Telerano before. Uh-huh. So maybe that's where you know him from. Uh, people want to know if you play video games. I don't. <laughs> And that's getting back to the question that you were asking or not really asking, but the topic that we were discussing. Mm-hmm. Like I have kids. I also work. And this is the stuff that I don't get to do in order to do everything that I do. I don't get to play games. I don't get to go to the movies. I don't oh, get geez. to go to the gym. Like my work is my hobby. And I understand that at the moment there's nothing else I can take on. So I don't, but I used to. And what were you playing when you used to play? Well, Sims. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loves the Sims. I love the Sims. I love the Sims. And um, a couple of days ago, I saw uh, Separ and Cynthia. They were playing Sims with his kids. And I, <laughs> I wrote to her. I'm like, I can't wait to do that again once my kids are at that age. And I can play with them and enjoy that stuff with them. I also, well, Crash Bandicoot. Oh, yeah. Uh, There's a new one. Tekken. There's a new one coming too. And Injustice. Injustice. You know, Which the, fighting, the fighting games are my... Do you have a favorite, favorite character there? Pff, I don't remember the characters anymore, but I always chose the dark ones, not the... Probably Batman. Okay. He was one of them. Superman, yeah. I think, was there too. Yeah. No, Superman was definitely not my favorite. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> But that's really surprising. Sims as well. Yeah, last time I had here Voodie from uh, Vida Do. Yes. And he was telling me that he plays online with people, which I didn't know was possible, uh-huh. that you could play Sims? with other people. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. And the other thing is that they have a like a game where they just try to kill each other. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. I haven't played in a very long time. Things must have changed. 
it's if becoming real. If there would be real. a way to play with people and get paid for it as well. Well, there I is. It's called Twitch. I could add this, but with Sims? With anything. Really? Yeah. <gasps> This, this, well, is, this, this is what I'm <laughs> if surprised. If I could add this <laughs> to my <laughs> work stuff, I might manage to get in a little playing. And wow. I think you would be even more successful as a as a gamer streamer. Really, you yeah. think? Yeah, you have charisma. Oh, thank you. So I think people would really gravitate hmm. to that. And you know what? It would be refreshing because most of the pretty girls that are on Twitch. They're not doing any g- gameplay. They're on a bathtub. Okay. In a bikini. Okay. Just okay. Kind of sad to me okay. that, that that's what it is. But it's time for a Sims player there. Okay. <laughs> so that might be the gap that you get to fill. Uh, so there's no... Let's go to a uh, question. Your questions. Yes. <laughs> oh, I see I the <laughs> first question. <laughs> then I always forget <laughs> about them, so... <laughs> So this was uh, asked in Instagram. Uh-huh. Some of these are mine and some of them are Who from Who asked Insta- them? Did he ask the question? <laughs> no, no. It was some guy. I will tell you afterwards. Okay. His name is... Uh, no. What do you think about Philip Sulik <laughs> and who started the beef? Who started... <laughs> okay, let's start with the end of the question. Who started the beef? Well, it's kind of hard to say because the first... How the beef started was actually he posted a screenshot of a video of mine with my husband. My husband had like two buns, like space Mm -hmm. buns on his head. And he said something like, this happens to you when you marry uh, Petrus Neskle. And he even spelled my name wrong. So it was like like the bad word in Slovak. And I had to react because if it would have been about me, like who cares? But people sent it to me and I... Like, when I see somebody saying stuff like that about my husband, and also in this way, like, my husband is so comfortable in his masculinity that he doesn't mind wearing space buns. And he even, it wasn't, like, my doing. Because sometimes... It was the girls. Yes. Yeah, no, it was him. <laughs> he just him by <laughs> himself. He was just playing with his hair and trying stuff out because his hair is long now. So I reacted and I just tagged him and I said, well... You could have at least tagged me and not done it behind my back if you want to say something. And that's kind of how it started. But um, I think it was also um, the f- why I reacted was that I remembered a comment from two years ago that was really nasty. From um, him? Uh, not from him, but wha- from, let's say, one of the people in his circle. So... I kind of, I don't know, I always knew ever since then that this group of people for some reason has an issue <laughs> with me. So I think that's why I reacted and not just blocked him. And right I feel you, something. girl. I think that <laughs> if I read it correctly, y- you'll take it on you. But if somebody comes for your husband yeah. or your kids, yeah, you g- they're going to hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And that's an interesting thing for me because I've seen some of the things that you post mm-hmm. that people write to you. Mm-hmm. What is wrong with people? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But it's also one of the topics that I talk about online a lot because um, I just don't don't think it's okay for no, people to say that stuff. Not. And even though I came to the point that I really don't care anymore and actually... Every hate message or hate comment that I ever got has helped me like find the value within myself and see, you know, like realize that people's opinions don't matter, especially if th- those are people that don't know me. But I always like I'm very empathic. So I always see or think about other people having to read or listen to stuff like that said about them yeah and i don't think that's okay so that's why i speak about cyberbullying a lot and that's why i sometimes pick out some of the messages or comments that i get and i talk about it because i want to show people that it's not okay 
And I'm really surprised that you actually read your DMs with so much of that nonsense. I try, I try I to read. Well, it's a lot. And they're like always, it's up and down. There, there are times that it's kind of not as much negativity and then something happens with maybe a person like that <laughs> and there's more negativity or when some of my videos goes more viral and stuff like that so but also there has always always been much more of the positive than the negative yeah so that's, it's that's like it's still is not even five percent of everything that i get so yeah that's the other thing i wanted to mention that also there's some beautiful things that people write to you yes. as well like thank you for doing yeah does that make you want to continue doing yeah. what you're doing yeah because when i started doing what i'm doing the way that i'm doing it now it was to help myself like i spoke about my marriage my relationship which was not good at the time and it was help it was like therapy for me to write about it and just putting it out there helped me a lot but then reading that it helped other people or that they saw oh this is happening to her as well it's not just me and then i saw oh it's not just me it's all these people it i don't know it's 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 the fuel to speak about issues and not just the pretty stuff but also the tough stuff and it's really like it's beautiful it, when i read about people going to therapy because i spoke about it or speaking about sexual abuse for the first time because i speak about it or just just realizing things because i speak about them like and to me i really love how you handle hate as well like the the responses i i think the <laughs> the last one that i was laughing for maybe 15 minutes is when you were replying to somebody and you were just mentioning that Yeah, it's so difficult having a wife with perfect boobs <laughs> and looks who's not perfect. Per, per yeah, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> I was just um <laughs> Yeah, it's I loved know, it. Um because um there were times that I I shared much more of the hate than I do now. But when I shared it And even though it was negative and some people were like, "Uh, oh, you know, why are you sharing so much negative stuff? Why are you dealing with it even just block the person?" But every time I posted it, I got so many funny reactions from my followers. It always turned into something funny and nice and th that was more important to me than ignoring it. And it just imagine that how sad you must be to be in Yeah. For them to have you in their mind all the time and finding ways to just That's what <laughs> that's what confuses me like people ask when when do when do I have time to do stuff that I do well it's my work and it's my family but where do those people find the time to look at everything somebody else is doing like if they I always think like if you would spend your time <laughs> doing something productive and for yourself You could have been in my shoes maybe or like doing what you love and making money with it. People have or a lot of time to, to be just negative. Just go to therapy and be happier. Because people have a lot of time to be negative. Yeah, and to complain. Also, with this thing about time management and doing the things that you love, uh, <clears throat> I always find it that, you know, you will find time. Yes. If you want to do something. For yes. me, this is also a hobby. Yeah. This, uh, this whole pa podcast thing. I work regularly nine yeah. to five in corporation i'm a slave to the man yes <laughs> yes i admit it i need to eat <laughs> and actually this this whole project these donations uh all of this whatever this podcast makes will go to dobrianja that's really nice or maybe you know some place that could use i donations. like dobrianja you I like support it dobrianja so we will be doing that i there's not enough for them to do a payout but yeah that's what <laughs> i want to do Yeah. And I have to monetize because then they won't promote my YouTube, yeah. promote my stuff. Yeah. So. Okay. so it's got to be done. Okay. But yeah, that yeah. sweet, <laughs> sweet Peñas is going to Kiska. It's coming, Kiska. Just wait a <laughs> little. <laughs> do you like Kiska? I, I do. I do. I and like Kiska as I well. I know that uh, Kubro in the chat doesn't. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, he's uh, my former colleague. Okay, he, he doesn't like Kiska. No, he well, doesn't. But Kiska I'm like, fans here. <laughs> sucks for you. <laughs> Bohujel, Camo. Bohujel. <laughs> Is he a colleague from Starbucks? No, okay. from Lenovo, when I used okay. to work in Lenovo. Petya, uh, before we forget, yes. let's sign the PC. Let's sign the PC. And while you're signing the PC, mm-hmm. I'm going to just show the people what Where you brought. Where do I sign it? Anywhere you want. Okay. You're the boss. Okay. Careful with your coffee. Jeez. I almost dropped these. All done. So you, thank you very much. This, uh, yeah, there you go. This uh, PC is going to be given away. Really? Yeah, once we get to 500,000. Wow. I know it's wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean. But it will have all the guests that ever came here. It's so really nice. You brought us a lot of stuff here. I brought a package. Yeah. I would have brought more stuff, but last week I was a guest at a podcast and they asked me to bring something. So <laughs> this is the second package already. But thank you so much. I still managed to put some stuff together. I, I wanted to also buy it, but you were so kind. You were no, like, no, no, I'll bring it. Yeah, yeah. So, tell us what's here, <laughs> and while you're telling us, we need a sign because um, I'm actually going to ship these to people. Okay. So, we have one, two, yes. three, four, five, six, and... We can do, like, bundles. Okay. How many bundles should we put together? Two or three. Oh, there's uh, Zuzana Stevove. Hi, she Zuzana. She's a fan. I she, don't know. She, she, she's okay. a fan. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she, she's my former colleague. Ah, okay. Yeah. So she's cool. Hi, Susanna. <laughs> Susanna, Suzuka, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask. Ask away. Uh, yeah. What so is that's this? that's Hurricane. Uh, it's uh, let me see if it's in English. No, it's not. <laughs> it's um, drinks trstinave šťavy. I have no so idea how to say trstinave šťava. Trstinave uh, sugar cane. Yeah, sugar cane. Yeah, sugar cane okay. drink. It's a sugar cane drink. You know, the sugar cane version. is from my peoples. Oh, here. See? Sugar cane drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, so, I sign my name, right? Yeah, or what y- do I do? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Just so people know it's from you. Okay. You know, I we're always g- giving away stuff in the podcast. Pachita? Pochta is so expensive. Pochta is <laughs> expensive. <laughs> yeah, I uh, took some pictures uh, of some of my stuff for Vinted. And I'm already thinking about the shipping and I'm like... Ugh. And just imagine that sometimes in Slovakia, like I do very well, but there are things that I do that make me feel so helpless. Mm-hmm. And one of them is going to posta. posta. <laughs> yeah. Like I've never felt so useless in my life. I didn't even know that you had to fill a paper out mm-hmm. to send a letter. Mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, it's it's there. Like wh- why do you need me to fill yeah. out another paper? Yeah. And sometimes you need to fill a different paper. So I come with the pre-filled paper and they tell me like, no, you have to fill this one out. <laughs> oh, don't tell me that. No, it's it's even more expensive than you think because it takes so much time and time is money. Poshta is extremely expensive. And let me tell you this really embarrassing story with Poshta. <laughs> <sighs> so because I wanted to. So while I'm telling my story, mm-hmm, you can mm-hmm, sign mm-hmm. the second Huracan. Um I was uh, going to the Porsche and I saw that you have to fill out this paper, right? So I was like, I always have to fill these out. So can I take some of them? So I'm yeah. like, th- this this was me, like looking everywhere, like, <laughs> and then I just take a whole bunch yeah. and put them in my pocket, <laughs> and I start to run away. <laughs> and the lady from, you know, you can take those, right? Yeah. You need any more? <laughs> I never went oh, back no. to that Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> if you work in Navy, I will never go back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But yeah, I have a bunch of those at home as well. <sighs> Now I do. So this is what? This is a candle. Oh. A soy candle. Soy? Yes. This is a soy candle. This is also a soy candle. Different, uh, well, not flavors, but smells. Looks fancy. And, Yeah. So Max Menzel replied that I started with interviews more than five years ago 
because I love interactions with people discussing and interesting stories. We already know what is Petra's biggest inspiration, but why podcast? I already know the answer because you answer this several times. <laughs> and this is something that really pisses me off too. It's like journalists have no um creativity. They're asking you the same stuff over All and over. over again. Yeah. And like for me, I haven't given that many interviews, but I can't imagine being like a rapper and <laughs> getting asked the same questions. Like you, they do five interviews in a row and then the same five interviews in a row when they come out with a new album and it's the same questions over and over oh, again. Imagine promoting a movie. Oh, yeah. That's even worse. I can imagine. But yeah, they're, they're always asking you this question about why podcasting. Yeah. Um, that's why I appreciate when my guests on my podcast tell me, oh, you have asked a, questions that, a question that nobody has asked before. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> I always I'm 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 I don't know. I try to m the vibe of my podcast is always like two people having coffee together. Like that's what I want and I'm so happy when I get that because not every guest is able to get that vibe or let you in, but when I get it, I love it. Yeah, I I love how you put it that um uh, with some people you could be there even the whole day. And it would be fine, but there's other people that don't flow with you and it's harder for you to... Yeah. Do you prepare a lot before your podcast or you you like to go in just cold turkey? Depends. There are some people that I don't prepare at all. If it's people that I have followed for years or... Yeah. People that I I know from the internet, then I don't prepare at all. Mm. Mm. And there are some people that I, for example, I have a guest planned for October and there are specific topics that I want to ask him about. So I wrote those down in case I forget mm. <laughs> till October. But yeah, most of the time I'm like, even if some guests ask me like, can you send the questions in advance? And so, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them want to like know what we're going to be talking about. And I'm like, I don't do that ever because I don't have the questions prepared in advance. But if you want me to, I can send you like the topics that I want to talk about. But I don't know if we would even get to most of them because yeah. I like to go with the flow. I think uh, I'm discovering my how I'd like to mm -hmm. do it. I like to have questions just mm -hmm. because yeah, people it's ask nice them. To, yeah, and it's nice to have something to fall, b fall back on. If yeah, There have been podcasts or guests that I was like, okay, I wish I would have written more, answer, uh, more questions down because the answer was answers were so short. And not everybody's able to like have a discussion. I can imagine. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they answer, and I don't know. I Maybe I should start telling people beforehand that it's not an interview. It's a discussion. Or yeah. it, it should be a discussion. I, uh, as I approach to it, for me, it's, uh, it's about getting to know people and presenting them to an audience, right? And also, I couldn't find English interviews with you or English discussions mm -hmm. anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> So I think for me, this is the the biggest victory, right? Presenting a different side because already I can see a different side of you from when you talk Slovak. Yeah, yeah, there is a huge, there is a huge difference in all of the languages that I speak. Like, uh, what else do you speak? Well, I speak fluent German, okay, fluent English, and Slovak and Czech are my mother tongues. So with my mom, I speak Czech, and with her side of the family, and with my dad and his side of the family, I speak Slovak. Man, I can't, I, for the life of me, I cannot understand Czech. Really? Like at all. Like when people start to talk Czech, it's like. Okay. You know, have you seen like a beautiful mind? Yeah. It's all these <laughs> symbols. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because I it's similar, similar, but different. It's just those yeah. weird pronunciation. But if it is somebody from Moravia, mm -hmm. then um, it's much it's better. It's more similar. But Bohemians. Yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah. yo, yo. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, but I'm very I'm I have a 
TikTok video where I speak in all like Slovak, German, and English, and I sound very different in each of them. Have you thought of uh, doing something similar to what I do, like uh, German interviews of people that speak German? I Slovaks? would love to, but I don't think there is an audience for it. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know because when I started I started in English and everything I did was in English my Instagram was all in English my blog was always English and Slovak mm -hmm. and I lived in Germany but yeah you English were studying like uh, if, if I'm not mistaken you were in Berlin studying uh, journalism yes. with uh, focus on online yes Is that right yes, that's right has that helped you in your job now I think so I think what I was Because like you said, I started when I was 12. I think that helped me a lot at school. And in turn, school helped me a lot with what I do now. I was impressed when I was reading your story of starting at 12 years old. Because you, at 12 years old, knew enough that this concept that you were bringing in was not a Slovak concept. And I think from yeah. you, people started to do this type of... Mm. How did you come up with it at 12? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was... Mm, it all started with a passion <laughs> and that passion was being a fan of bands like music bands and i don't know it was a trend then but not I, here though. I get not here though yeah exactly and i think the fact that i had family in america and i saw what was happening there and also Thanks to me being able to speak other languages, I the world of internet was much more open to me than other people who didn't speak other languages. So I could get, get inspired by other people from other countries. And yeah. Yeah, and I think that I'm just going to move the camera a bit because we can see you better there. <laughs> nobody want to look at my ugly self <laughs> 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 they see me enough <laughs> yeah I, and i think you bring up a good point about uh things that happen in america because if somebody's smart enough they will start to see the trends there and bring them here before they come because yeah. they always end up here that's very true all the time they yeah. just six you months later you don't even have to go to america like go to berlin get inspired and i had so many ideas that i wanted to do that i saw work in berlin and i was like why is there anything why isn't there anything like that in bratislava i mean there isn't even like a proper tech reviewer given yeah. slovak i mean in czech or, or mm. slovak that would just be doing unboxings or tech stuff yeah if my slovak was better i would do that <laughs> that would be my dream yeah. <laughs> What I wanted to start was something um, similar to Lieferando, which was, um, it's a food delivery service. Oh, okay. And at that time, there wasn't a vault in Berlin yet. There was Lieferando, Lieferheld, and something else, Pizza.de. And, like, sites with different restaurants on them delivering food. Which now we have, we have Bistro SK and we have Vault and Ball Food. But at that time, there wasn't anything like that here. Th there's so many things like that. Yeah. Even like taxi services. Yes. Like Uber and stuff like yeah. that. If, if I was ambitious and had a little money, I would like invest in these things. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm too busy with my stuff. Patrick Dian says, good evening, everyone. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing very fine. Me too. Oh, Lou Vojtkova. Ahoy, Lou. She's from... Uh, we met at Vidadu. She's cool. She's been joining the podcast lately, so... Yeah. I feel privileged. <laughs> And look, somebody said something nice. Lara said she seems like a nice person. She is. Thank I, you. I will not invite not nice people. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. It says, uh, we already did, read that. Poshta is bad in many countries. Yeah, I I wouldn't say that that my complaint is about the Poshta being bad, but just there's too many bureaucracy things. Just let a brother send a letter. Yeah, but I mean, 
It is the posta because <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be no, like it nice. No, it is the posta. <laughs> Ladies, please, a posta <laughs> here in Drujino, please, this is not my opinion. <laughs> I do not endorse this message. <laughs> I have a friend from Ukraine that fled here when the war started and she wasn't a friend before she became a friend uh when she when she fled and I was kind of helping her with stuff and we were talking about stuff and she was asking me like this posta <laughs> what's up with that? And she was telling me the system that they have in Ukraine that there are these little Posta like stores twenty four seven open, you just come in like quick twenty four seven small little pobochki. We need no. those pobochki. Yes yeah. we do. We do. But then it 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 lets me it it uh, I just think I related everything is connected to just I think that there is no culture of service, right? And yes. no, I swear I did not pee myself. <laughs> that's that's the water there. <laughs> Sorry, guys, it's a really embarrassing staying here and <laughs> it's from the water, I swear. <laughs> the culture of service, like people it's don't like to serve. Yeah. Oh, why? <sighs> I mean, I know why, because... I think people see it as a demeaning thing, right? And so I was telling you that I used to work at Starbucks. Yes. And uh, I was working at a very good job, making very good money. And I was working at Starbucks. I was working only a few hours per week. And, you know, to me, it was a pleasure to serve nice people. I remember. <laughs> Did I ever serve you? Yes. Was I nice? Yes. Thank Always. God, thank God. That was <laughs> nice. <laughs> But, But I yeah. have to say, at Starbucks, most of the people, I feel like they enjoy what they do. And yeah. they are taught probably how to do it it's it's the culture you know yeah. the the training as well and the type of people that they hire because i worked in several shops and and there there's an emphasis to to how you behave with people yes. i also had really bad experiences with people like uh, especially making fun of my slovak okay like i always go back to like you know the these customers yeah but it would always be the typical on the weekends the typical guy taking this uh, slatokopka <laughs> and it was a brauchove hlava <laughs> And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I would speak in Slovak mm -hmm. and then he would repeat what I was saying, trying to like embarrass me for my accent or for mm -hmm. something that I said wrong. Trying I'm to like, boost his ego in front of his Zlatokopka. Mm. But what could I do? Like, I mean, I, I, I really lost the fear of speaking if I made a mistake. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, at least I'm trying, right? Yes. So, but serving people was a nice thing to do yeah like, and you it also you know what it gave me like some humbleness mm -hmm. because i feel that people nowadays are really afraid to be humble mm -hmm. and to serve others yes yes so that's yeah. that's my two cents on that yeah. topic but i used to work at amazon doing seller support and that's new i didn't read that anywhere yeah yeah i usually don't say the name of the company i just say i work at a I used to work at an international corporate. Here? Yes, in Bratislava. Near uh, Dulovo Namestia? Uh, it was uh, Namestia Prvého Maja. Mm -hmm. on, yeah. They moved, I think. No? Yes, yes, yes. They moved and they closed our department completely. But they uh, Probably a good thing, though. Now you have time to do what you love. Yes, yeah, well, yeah. I was at maternity leave when they did that. And I always planned, like... When I found out that I was pregnant, I was like, perfect. Now I give myself three years to, <laughs> like, do what I do full time, basically. Where did you and meet your husband? And it happened sooner at Amazon. So he yes. was working at yes. Amazon as well? Well, I started in September. He started in October. So the first time I saw him was November 1st, I guess, because that's when they came from the learning room on the floor And I saw him and I was like, finally someone mm, cool. <laughs> that's my property, girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then I saw that he's taken, that he has a girlfriend. Wow. So I was like, nope. And then they broke up. I was the last one to know somehow. All of the other girls were already already like, ooh, he's not taking anymore. And I was like, okay. <laughs> but somehow he became even hotter and 
How does it work with girls? Because with guys, we we have a code, right? I know it's kind of machista to be like... Yeah, the bro code? Uh, yeah, but you know, like putting your... Like, I'm going for oh, her. Okay, okay, yeah. You're staking your claim. Well, <laughs> with girls, I think in this particular thing, we might be a little competitive with each other, oh. especially if we're not friends. But also there were girls that were pretending to be friends and they were like literally fighting over him at summer parties, you know, alcohol and stuff. And That's I the wasn't excuse. there and alcohol. I just heard about it and I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. And then somehow when the right time came, I swept in and... <laughs> you took what was yours. I took what was mine, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actually managed to get him to a business trip, on a business trip. So we went on a business trip together at the same time. And this was organized by you? Well, kind of. Oh, you sneaky, <laughs> sneaky girl. <laughs> well, I'm really good at managing stuff. So I just managed everybody around me. But also it's a lot of initiative. Out. Yes. Because... Uh, yes. yes, because I really wanted to get to know him. And I kind of felt like in Bratislava, we were never going to get the chance to like properly get to know each other without other people around his friends and people at work. So it was the perfect opportunity to get to know each other and it worked out. <laughs> What a perfect business trip. Yeah. Definitely. There's a somebody, hey guys, question for Petush. How did you learn to speak fluent German? How did I learn to speak fluent German? Well, um, I started learning German in... I think it was third grade elementary school, but it was really bad Slovak German, you know, mm -hmm. like the school German. And then my j then when I first went to America for two and a half months, I think it was. So you were in America. Yes. Where? Yes. Uh, Atlanta. Well, Marietta, Georgia. 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 <laughs> And that's when I forgot everything I learned in German before. And I was really bad at German. And then somehow I started liking German music. Tokyo Hotel was my favorite band. Then another German band. And I started reading German magazines. And I started my blogs when I was 12. So somehow it came about that I really started to like the language. And I liked the musicians from Germany. So I think when you have that passion for something, it kind of goes together hand in hand. Yeah, I hand in hand. And I, I wanted yeah. to learn and German. Then, and then I went, then I started on a bilingual uh, gymnasium. Here in Slovakia? Yes, okay. yes. And that helped me a lot. But what helped me most was then studying in Berlin. That's when I think, th I think that was the point where It was when it got me to a point where you can't forget the language anymore because you just, yeah. Yeah, that's for me, it's tricky because I was raised with two languages. Mm -hmm. uh, well, maybe similar to Slovak and Czech, right? So to me, it was never a difference between the two. Mm -hmm. It was just the same language, right? So I didn't have to, to try hard. But I did want to learn German. Unfortunately, my school didn't have German. Mm -hmm. So I had to take Italian, and that was a waste of time. Okay. <laughs> like I never got to use it, like, you know, briefly yeah, with yeah. people. And the worst was I was so proud going to Italy. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, I had a trip planned with my friend Rome and Sicily, and I'm going to be so yeah. awesome at, <laughs> at Italian. And I went to Sicily, nobody understood me. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. could order water. Yeah. <laughs> But that was about it. But now that I know that you were in the States, I can clearly make out why you have such a good accent. <laughs> Because I could totally make you out for living in the States. Yeah. And yeah. So very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, sometimes w um, when we got stopped at customs, that was kind of an issue that I didn't really have. Sorry to interrupt you, but look at that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, that was kind of an issue sometimes because uh, I spoke too good English and they were confused, like a Slovak girl speaking, and I was 13, 14. But so I, do, I do get it because today 
today was the first time that you sent me a voice message yeah. on it. <laughs> I was like, who's this Valley girl writing to me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i i really like to do accents as well okay. like just for fun so i think it's kind of a passion of mine trying to perfect not the vocabulary and the grammar but the pronunciation what is your favorite accent that you can make <laughs> <laughs> well i haven't practiced in a really long time but with uh, my cousin we like to do the the redneck accent <laughs> alabama yeah, from alabama <laughs> you my sister my wife <laughs> oh no <laughs> the hot boiled peanuts yeah that's what i like to do and i also well i when i was drunk when i s used to drink alcohol i used to do the russian accent in in english and well the Brit british english is also fun yeah and i'm not like a harry fan harry potter <laughs> i'm not a fan <laughs> <laughs> but there are also many different english accents It's i remember true. watching skins and that was a completely different british accent than for example harry potter some of them are uh, you cannot make out what they're saying like the yeah. cockney accent from yeah from london it yeah who knows what they're talking about like yeah. now <laughs> nowadays i work with uh most of my team is in the uk mm -hmm. and uh they're in the uk and they're in ireland as well oh no and <laughs> that's tough you know the toughest thing hasn't been really understanding them because yeah it's, it's yeah. english after all but spelling their names <laughs> or reading their names okay, okay yeah. i hope none of my colleagues are watching this now <laughs> but i have a colleague whose name is spelled oh maybe you can tell me how you would read okay. it it's e i o n e i i have no idea that's really t so you have you have three tries oh no <laughs> okay e uh, can i write it down you can write it down yes, of how course. do you work with that is just like paper okay but it's not paper I will write it for you okay, to make perfect. your life easier. See, I'm a gentleman. Eon. Okay. No? No. It's not. <laughs> yawn. <laughs> <laughs> no. Are you yawn? Yeah. <laughs> One oh, more try. No. In. <laughs> no idea. It's Owen. Owen. No, that's not Owen. <laughs> I swear that's to God, that's <laughs> Owen. That reminds me of, uh, there was uh, this clip from some, I think it was a news show, and the name was Erica, but it was spelled E-I-W-R-E-C-K-A. -E Erica, <laughs> but it was Erica. <laughs> That, yeah. remind, that that brings yeah. back all of high school for me like having friends like Mike Keisha. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where did you where did you live or wait where? I, I I was born in New York state. Mm -hmm. And the town was a small town called Portchester. And the population was around 60% Latino. Okay. And like 20% black and the rest Italian for yeah. some reason. <laughs> oh, love it. <laughs> it. It's really funny because this whole place is uh the most a uh, county is like cry right so mm -hmm. it, it's called westchester county and it's the richest county in the u.s mm -hmm. has the most millionaires okay. and rich people right next to it is greenwich connecticut which is the second richest place with people like mel gibson live there okay. and all these people but right in the middle of it is my village <laughs> and that's where all the nannies and oh, okay. gardeners live so okay. all the brown people okay. doing all the stuff for them so yeah That's how it was there. But yeah, Mike Isha. And what else? Did we had Micronesia too. <laughs> let, let Tisha, let, let, yeah. Jack Queen. Yeah, and yeah. I love, but I love it. For some reason, I love it. Yeah, it wasn't weird to me till I moved Because out. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it's part of the culture now. There's a very famous clip. Are you, a, have you ever seen uh, Key and Peel? Nope. It's a comedy show. Okay. Key and Peel, um, for example, Peel went on to become a director and he made movies like Nope. 
mm-hmm. Nye Nye, now in cinemas, mm-hmm. and Get Out. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you heard of mm-hmm. them. Scary movies. Oh, yeah, that's why I haven't heard. And he has a skit, right, where he's a, he's a substitute teacher mm-hmm. from the inner city. Okay. New York, that goes, he gets called to, like, middle America. Yeah. And he's, um, he goes to the class and he's like, okay, I'm going to run the attendance here and you guys better not play any games here. I'm going to have my foot up your ass if you do anything like that. Jay Quellen. <laughs> Where the hell is Jay Quellen? <laughs> Jacqueline oh no you didn't <laughs> and then he's like hey Aaron hey Aaron you mean Aaron <laughs> so yeah. I'll, yeah, have to, yeah. I'll have to send it to you because it's it's one of the most hilarious things back to our questions mm-hmm. from the people yes and some for me actually I want to talk about what lessons you Have you learned and can you teach about identifying your unhealthy behavior? Because you reference mm-hmm. that you, one of the biggest reasons that you made the next move and, and became more popular was overcoming your, I don't know if the translation was good, the, your toxic behaviors mm-hmm. in relationships mm-hmm. and work. Well, I think for me, the biggest... that helped me overall in my life whether it was work life or family life was going to therapy and just getting to know myself and not being it is actually um my I, i don't know if you saw i had a tedx talk uh, i saw that you were preparing weekend. but i haven't yeah. seen it yeah Where it's is not it? it's not online uh-huh. yet but that was actually my topic Uh, the main topic of the event was Prada Odvaha, so truth or dare. And what I talked was, I talked about daring yourself to see the truth about yourself. And, well, that's not really a proper translation, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that was what I learned in therapy, that I am able to see the the true me and i you know when i was younger i was always like no this is me like this is me this is how i am this is not gonna change and then through therapy and through not being a not being afraid of seeing myself and the real true myself i was like but this is changeable if i don't want to be like this if i don't want to be Like, not have my emotions under control or if I don't want to, I don't know, scream at people when we fight. Like, I can change it. And, yeah. For me, it's, um, I have a really difficult time opening up to people. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if I would be able to do therapy because I, I just don't like speaking about myself. Mm-hmm. And I don't like telling people... my secrets or mm-hmm. i i always have this fear of people using my it against you yeah. but you can look at it from a different um point of view or that's at least what i did i look at it from the point of view that when i talk about it i get to tell my story my way because if somebody else was to open a topic about me then you know it would be told from a different perspective so this way i'm kind of owning myself and my shit <laughs> and my stuff and i get to tell my story nobody else gets to tell my story the thing that freaks me out the most is that you need to make that realization for yourself yes and it's hard yes how long did it take you to overcome some of these things depends i think there's still some stuff that needs some working on and you know right now with kids and work i don't have time to like be inside myself and work on stuff but there is still stuff that i'm working on just by living life and 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 like what i learned in therapy is still something that i go back to every day in everyday situations and i take something from it and i can do that without a therapist now 
but there are also situations where I'm like, okay, now now I would need a little more guidance from someone who is taught to give guidance. And I don't know, with some things it took a lot of time, with other things it was kind of quick because, you know, I think everybody's like that like we have some stuff that we realize is kind of an issue but we don't want to admit it but then there are things that you don't even realize are an issue and for me i i think it was the sixth or the seventh uh therapy session where i realized that it's gonna be hard and it's gonna like tears are gonna flow and it's gonna take like real digging and but it was so worth it can Maybe this might be a difficult question. This is not something that is here, mm-hmm. but I just thought about. And did you ever have any concerns about your physical appearance? Not really. Not really. N- well, depends. Um, because there are two sides of that. One hand, I was... Like, my parents never focused on weight, on physical appearance I never saw them like looking in the mirror saying oh I need to lose weight and stuff like that so that part of it I don't know it's just very foreign to me and And even if girls because I you know from from my years of working with kids they even do it in front of like me they they, you know do you got fat after being in camp for five days I'm like what's wrong with you yeah yeah so many people focus on stuff like that and I'm, I'm really thankful because exactly like when my kids at my school started talking about their appearance and getting fat i was like eh? mm-hmm. and someone might think that it's because i was never fat but that's not the case like even thin girls did have these issues and that's why every time i get asked about ppp uh, like anorexia bulimia i don't know how to answer those questions because it's just so far away from me so i always refer to friends of mine that have been dealing with these issues but on the other hand i was always mm, i always remember being made aware that my skin color is darker than typical slovak when i was a kid i was much darker than i'm now i'm kind of getting <laughs> light don't really appreciate it anymore but but you like it right yeah yeah i like it now Mm -hmm. but when i was younger like i didn't have a problem with it but because and that was one of the things that i i went to therapy for i always valued other people's opinion too much me too so that's what kind of was always like uh, you know they were hazing me they were telling me that I was a gypsy and blah, blah, blah. And when I was older, I was like, and if I was, what, what's the issue? <laughs> like, who cares? That's insane. I think yeah. your skin color helps you. Yeah. I think if you were paler, this helps you. Yeah. And also, I mean, I never got sunburned. Not once in my life. So that I, I thought that I couldn't get sunburned. <laughs> because as you can see, I'm yeah. like, <laughs> I'm like a, a dark guy. Yeah. That's my winter color, actually. <laughs> and you can see the difference. <laughs> the thing is that my mom is completely white, like mm-hmm. <laughs> milk white. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and my dad is like browner than brown. Okay. <laughs> so that's the combination that we have. <laughs> but I, I thought I couldn't get sunburned, and this summer I got burned. Okay. And it wow. hurt. Okay. Yeah, I can imagine. I always hear people talking about it. It's like, how is that possible? Yeah. So yeah. Now I got to start taking a care of my beautiful skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the yeah. reason that I asked you the question about the image is because I'm going to be extremely frank with you. When <clears throat> when I first spoke to, because Lukas Verleis recommended mm-hmm. me. To, he said, you you got to talk to her. Like, she's extremely interesting and Thank you, Lukash for the lies. He has only nice things to yeah, say about yeah. you. He's a sweetie too. I love Lukash. <coughs> so he was uh he was telling me and then I checked your your Instagram and there of course a lot of pictures of you showing your Zadok. <laughs> <laughs> your Luke Susni <laughs> Zadok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my Luke Susni Zadok. <laughs> and I have to admit that I formed yeah. an opinion yeah. about you. From this, and I'm ashamed 
<laughs> that I did <laughs> because then when I went to do research on uh-huh. you, I'm like, but this this girl is amazing. <laughs> like all oh, the you. things that she has and and like I I just made my opinion on a few pictures, but then I thought why would you put these pictures? And then the opinion in my head was that you are not afraid to put your body out there and it's not about like these are my boobs for you yeah. but These i love my, my boobs, boobs for me yeah exactly exactly but i had to grow into that as well how did you do that because Therapy. hell <laughs> hell no i'm not showing my boobs <laughs> to, to anybody <laughs> guys don't expect no instagram <laughs> i don't have look to me <laughs> well i heard dad bods are in so Maybe it's a luxus uh, nebrushko. So maybe, guys, if you like the dad bod, <laughs> just put it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took some time. Um, like I said, I it, I was never ashamed of my body or never had, like, body image issues. On the other hand, I refused to go uh, on the sun for many years. Like, in the summer, my my best friend was always tanning And well, now when I think about it, she had like timer set. Like now from the front, then she turned around from her back. She needed the perfect tan. And I was always in the shade like, no, I don't want to get darker because of all the things that mm. I heard about being dark. And then the other thing was hair. Like little hairs, hairy hairy arms and stuff this, like that. This is and what I, I don't get because at least <laughs> I, I don't mind girls that have hair on their arms. Well, well... Us girls with darker skin and darker hair, we have, like, ha- hair that everybody, every girl has hair everywhere, like, all on the face, on the arms, everywhere. But on girls with blonde hair, you don't see it as much. Yeah. So, and I've, now I'm able to speak about it, but but this was, like, the main reason that I never went um, to Zlata Pieski with friends from school. Because Just I was because afraid that if I put on my bathing suit, they were going to see the little hairs on my back. It's cr- it's crazy now that I <laughs> think about it. But that's wh- how I was feeling. And when I sp- spoke to other girls with darker hair as well, we all had the same issue. We all had the same issue because I even remember guys from my school like, eh, why don't you shave your legs, blah, blah, blah. And so I came home and I... Why don't you get rid sh- of that ugly on sh- your face? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was an issue, but for me, I was always afraid to post like racy pictures before, mm, because I was I I feared being judged. Like I don't know, I don't even know. I for, know, for I know, looking I, slutty or I, I know exactly <laughs> what you mean yeah. because, like I said, I yeah. And and I apologize yeah. for making that <laughs> opinion just from first yeah. impression, right? But you really have to get to know the people, right? And, yeah. and now it makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, and now it's like I celebrate my body and I I celebrate it. Your even, tempo. Even though I'm not 100% happy with it right now. Because like I said, I don't have time to work out. And like if I want to eat chocolate, I eat chocolate. I'm not going to torture myself. Mm-hmm. So my body is not my ideal body right now, but I still love it and I still appreciate it and I still want to show it off. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm, somehow I managed to be really self-confident regardless of what I look like. And that's a huge difference. My first pregnancy and after the pregnancy versus my second pregnancy and after the pregnancy, like it's so different. Mm. And I think that uh, you definitely hit it on the nail again that uh, you have to love your body for you and not present it for others, yes. right? And I, I mean, think that's the mistake people make. Yeah, I mean, if you want to present it for others, who am I to judge? But For but, sure. Uh, it, goes, uh, it goes towards self-love, though. Yes. And, yes. and this is another topic that I want to touch with you. Please remind me about girl to girl interaction mm-hmm. because i have a very good discussion on okay, this but okay. but uh, somebody asked uh, stop dip stop dripping if there's going to be room for to question yes ask the questions ask in the away. chat uh we will answer them uh hey guys i've been oh that's for you 
I admire your work. It's really inspiring. Thank you very, very, very much. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you, Adele. I don't know, Adele. She's coming for you. <laughs> And we have quite a nice view. 24 viewers, which, which is nice. But I wanted to go back to the thing you said that girls are competitive and mm -hmm. mean to each mm -hmm. other. I had this discussion during the boys and girls talk. And we were talking about why the girls call each other. Is, and I'm sorry for the word. Shetka, I mm -hmm, think, is mm -hmm, the word. Mm -hmm. And why boys call them shetkas. Yeah. And the reaction that I got from most of the girls were like, yeah, we do it as a friendly thing. Like, like you shetka. And I'm like, mm -hmm. do you understand what power you give to words when you use them? My first question to them was, what do you call the boys? Yeah. And none of them could mm -hmm. tell me, like, yeah, we call them this. Yeah. Uh, somebody made a funny comment that you could say shetko. <laughs> but yeah. not, not really, yeah, right? Yeah, not really. And, and my question is, why do you call each other that? Mm -hmm. Because it, I go back to the, the word, like the N-word in English, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That people stop to use it because it gives it power. It gives it negative power. When you use that word... You are bringing years of slavery and lynching and killing of mm -hmm. black people, hanging black people. And this demeaning word to girls that calling each other, oh, you, you ho. Mm -hmm. Why? That's a very interesting question. I was actually thinking about this a very similar topic today or yesterday about the power of words. And I had a guest on my podcast, Emma Latsova. And she calls herself like some tučna štetka and stuff like that. But she does it in like when somebody else says it to her, it doesn't mean anything to her because she says it in a funny way in like, you know, like owning. Do you think that you can... And she's taking away the meaning of the word. And I don't know. I, I have been thinking about it a lot because... <laughs> for example uh <laughs> me and my best friend um when we uh, lived in germany or i lived in germany and she came to visit me i went to school and i remember like saying goodbye to her and we were using swear words about each other but it was in such a loving way that those words there was nothing from the original meaning in the way we said those words and i think and that's the conclusion that i came to when i was thinking about the topic uh yesterday that it's so much more about the it intent of the person saying that word than it is about the word itself but don't you think it propagates the word it but doesn't yeah, go yeah, away yeah i mean it's It gives, I think, when girls say to each other, it gives the boys reason to think that it's okay for them to call the girls. And that happens yeah. in Spanish yeah. too. Like yeah. in, in Spanish, there's, oh, hola puta. Yeah. Yeah. Or in Italian, putana. So, so there's such a thing. Uh, but I go back to, yeah, the power of words and how you say things. And there's always been, like, also in the gay community, they try to reclaim words like queer. Yeah. And I think to some level it's work, but it just keeps the word being used. Mm. Right? Yeah, keeps and it the in other the thing is, I mean, I can be okay with being called, I don't know, a shtetka, mm -hmm. but somebody else can get really hurt by that word. So, yeah. And it's also, like you said, with the N-word, I think that's what confuses so many people in Europe. Mm -hmm. Because they hear it in rap songs, And they don't, they don't know, like, so many of the people I know that have been making music, they have no idea about the whole discussion around the N-word. I know about it because I have friends in America, I grew up with American culture, but so many of people here have no clue about it. And they use the word because they hear it in songs, and I'm like, that's so inappropriate, but yeah. they don't even realize I, I usually, when I was teaching English and, you know, going back to what you mentioned before with uh, talking to people and podcasting, it, sometimes I encounter this, the use of this word. Um, and I had to explain to people mm -hmm. the historical context around it. Yeah. And 
It was a bit tricky. And let's see what people posted. How was uh how was <laughs> your time in Milikova? <laughs> I'm studying German bilingual gymnasium. I was wondering uh-huh. how was your time back then? Also, <laughs> also, there is a PE teacher called Petra Klimova. Are you guys related? <laughs> um, yeah. When I started going to Bilikova, when I was 10, was the year that Pet- the other Petra Klimova stopped going there. So we, 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 she went away. I came there. We are not related. <laughs> We're not related. That's your long lost sister. But <laughs> she had a she had a, a brother, Misha Klimo, and when he saw you know the older guys and and everybody was looking at the names of the new students and he saw <laughs> my name and one day he came to our um, class and he was like if anyone anyone does something bad to you just tell me I'm your brother now. <laughs> cool <laughs> i have no idea who you are but cool thank you um yeah i loved bilikova um i'm not gonna speak about the level of education because i think that's not very good uh anyway in slovakia honestly but i loved it there like i enjoyed it so much i wouldn't go back but if i could go back for one day And enjoy the whole day and then go back to my life now. Oh, I would do it anytime. I would like, never go back to school. I loved done. it. <laughs> I loved <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. And I actually, I was lucky that I was popular when I was in high school. Yeah. Which my sister wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, I was popular as well. That's why I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, but I um I went there recently, not to Bilikova, but next door. And it brought back so many memories like you go up the stairs and you remember exactly like the boy that you liked stood here and you went around him and you look at, like oh it's so still so fresh in my memory even though i'm like much much older now you remember high school drama yes what was <laughs> yes <laughs> what was your favorite <laughs> drama my favorite dr- oh my god oh my god <laughs> 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 i had a boyfriend <laughs> And ev- the whole school knew that we were boyfriend and girlfriend. And we broke up during the um, Velkonočne Praznini. Mm-hmm. And everybody knew. We were not even back at school yet. And girls were writing messages to him and boys were writing messages to me. And I was like, how? 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 And yeah, yeah. People There are was a lot insane. of drama around relationships and... I don't know. And people getting drunk when they shouldn't have been getting drunk. During and school? But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. During school and all. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Oh my god, now that I think back, yeah, we went to we went on a school trip to Poland and the people from the other class that stayed were in my class during that time and I was on the trip with the rest of the other class. And we were just just getting texts about what they are doing and that somebody got drunk and vomited on the lavitsa and ugh, it's just so disgusting. But I don't know. I I I really cherish all of that because I think high school forms you so much as a person. Like that time in your life and that age is so formative. Yeah. I'm always afraid though that you know being popular you peaked and from there it's just <laughs> downhill. <laughs> Doesn't have to be. But some But sometimes it, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I I I've kept in touch with some of the kids that you know were quarterbacks which for football like yeah. popular prom kings and queens. So prom king is like Stushkova. If you imagine yeah. that you selected the But we don't we don't rate <laughs> <laughs> It's probably yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Also, yeah. so weird that your parents are at Stushkova. What the hell's up with that? <sighs> well, especially my parents, who were supposed to go away as soon as possible. They don't even drink, so they have nothing to do there. And they the, wouldn't the, leave. No, they wouldn't leave. So we called them. I started acting like they were not there, and then they left because. We call yeah. them lingering farts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's very precise. It says here, what is Tilknerka better? Does that make sense Where to you? Where is Tilknerka? In Karolka? I think so. So it's a school? Yes. Yes. Okay. Bilichka, Tilknerka, 
Okay, so I have no idea about yeah. that. But <laughs> cool story, bro. The teacher is quite annoying. Girls always complain about her with Petra Klimova. Teacher. Yeah. You know, I could have <laughs> gone, but decided to stay Billy Well, Cole. well, and here is the thing. She was not annoying when we were there because we made her do the things that we wanted to do. And that was like, I don't know how, but my class, everybody was afraid of the physics teacher. Everybody. <laughs> and m my class, we formed such a loving friendship <laughs> with him. I have no idea how, but somehow we managed it. And also in PE, like, I don't know, the teachers understood that we wanted to play volleyball or volleyball or basketball all, all the time. So that's what we did. Does the, the We ruled the school. That's why I'm going to ask you if, <laughs> if the movie uh, Mean Girls resonates <laughs> with you. <laughs> but we were not mean. We were very loving. But we no, no plastics. Mean. No plastics. No, not, no plastic. Good. That's good to hear. I want to touch a little on your success okay. as an influencer. I know that one of the things you mentioned as, I don't know if the big su biggest success is having a million views on one of your videos. Do I? That's what you mentioned. Well. Reaching a million views or also this information, mm. take it with a grain of salt because every guest, the information that they have out there <laughs> is sometimes <laughs> not accurate at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember. And I don't even set goals for myself anymore because I kind of... I don't know if I ever even did set goals for myself, except for saying that I'm going to have three years to be doing this full time. Like that was a goal. Well, you did set a goal that you wanted to be famous. Kind of. But well, that wasn't a goal as well. No? Like I... Mm -mm, mm -mm. That was si something I kind of always wanted. And I kind of always like... Okay, it's gonna happen, but it was not like this is my goal and I'm going after it like no matter what. And ever since I realized that it's much more about the journey, I don't have the and the friends we made along the way, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it just for me, even thinking about what I do, it's just now about having fun with it. And and it's really nice when it gets many views and it's really nice when you get more followers and it's really nice. But I think it's much more about nowadays. It's much more about the community that you build and that you have around yourself than the number of people that follow you. Yeah, and that's a great lesson to learn because at the end of the day, you could have a million people following you, yeah. but if they're nasty. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Doesn't take you anyway. I just want to take a little break to highlight again that uh, Petush was kind enough to bring us gifts, guys. Look. <laughs> some drinks and some candles in case you have a stinky house. <laughs> if you, if you yeah. make a lot of pert perts, <laughs> then you can clean the air. That's for the girls. That's for intimate hygiene. Ooh, girls, this is very important because But we I guess men could also use it for intimate hygiene. Do you... You think so? Because I maybe men should use it. So actually, <laughs> listen, I, I, I am a very high level clean freak. Okay. And I use all of this stuff. Okay. Uh, like I have special thing for my face for cleaning my mm -hmm. face, my lush shampoo. But you have really nice skin. Thank you very so much. I take care of it. I use it my my after <laughs> cream, which for mixed skin. And yeah, I ha I have whole routines for how I take care of myself. Perfect. But back to this. But with the intimate thing, I at some point I was buying female mm -hmm. because you know I like to mm -hmm. keep clean mm -hmm. down there. But it has the wrong pH. Okay. Okay. So it, it's, it's oh, okay. Because the for men and women. the pen fifteen has the wrong uh, pH. Uh. <laughs> 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 were you were you ever? A member of the Pen15 Club when you were in the U.S.? No. No? No. Why not? I don't know. Like <laughs> nobody invited you to the Pen15? No. Can I invite you to the yes, Pen15 Club? <laughs> well, I just have to write pe Pen15 somewhere on you. And Where do you want it? Here. Okay. How big? <laughs> A small, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'll leave it up to you. Like this? Uh-huh. So this is the 
10. <laughs> oh no. 15. Now I <laughs> Now I get it. <laughs> so you can get me back so I can be a member of the yeah. 10 15 club. Which way? It's, it's up to, to you. <laughs> well, I guess this yeah, way. Yeah, this way. This is how immature Man. we were in high school. <laughs> Hey yeah, guys, for those of you who, <laughs> yeah, that's the pen fifteen club. <laughs> and by the end of the day, like everybody, even everybody. the teachers, <laughs> even the teachers, I love. Yeah, I'm in the club too. <laughs> Our English yeah. teacher, like sixty years old, she had no idea. Hey, I'm in the pen fifteen club. <laughs> But again, yeah. back to this guy. So she brought us gifts. You need to be following her on Instagram. What is your Instagram handle? Petjus. Vodka Naskle. Very good. And you have to be subscribed to the channel. Guys, 80% of the people that watch this podcast are not subscribed. How is it? I have no people idea. Subscribe. Give a bro a subscribe so that <laughs> other people want to come on the show because I'm too small for people to, to want to come. So please do. But not really. You have really interesting people uh, coming and also yeah. that have been here. Yeah, but look at... Look at the number there. <laughs> That will grow. I hope. I hope because we need to invite big people. Dream is to invite Chaputova. Okay. Probably when she's out of office because I can't imagine like yeah. secret service yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you brown, so I'm scared. You could do it in the car. <laughs> you know, Gogo, I think Gogo and Kiska had a video in really? the car. Yeah, yeah. Google it. I will need I, to I ask. I remember something like But that. But I, I don't have a connection with her, so... I need to find a connection with her. Uh, next thing I wanted to ask you before we continue with questions is look here, mm -hmm. up there. Mm -hmm. So this is every single perfume that mm -hmm. I've owned over the years. <laughs> and I've never been satisfied or found somebody that gave me good advice on mm -hmm. what perfume I should use. Okay. So I would like you to help me here. Do I have to smell all of them? Well, <laughs> I, 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 I would hope so. <laughs> like they, okay. You like, yeah, just that one. So let's take them. Well, from the looks of it, I like the penis one. The penis one. Yes. The let's see how it smells. This is the one I'm wearing now. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you have to <laughs> like wave through it. What is the okay. What, what is the right procedure? You have to walk through it. I like this one. It's yeah. very sweet. I would share this one with my I me and my husband we share perfumes most of the time and I would this is this one is really nice. Is It's sweet. Uh, and it has those pecnizado. It has a pecnizado and, and a pecni package as well, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean <laughs> this is a uh, big PP energy. <laughs> yeah. okay. I like this one very much. This one? Okay. Obviously, I'm a failure <laughs> at life. <laughs> Guys, don't learn from me. Like, Take me as an example of one not to mm, do I in like life. I like this one as well. Mm -hmm. This is my work one. I really like this. <gasps> this is going to be hard. This is for Zumba. Okay. <laughs> When I go to Zumba. So I am like work. Zumba because you have it on now, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I like both of these. I'm going to have to write these down. Sure. I like this one as well, but not as much as, as the first two. Okay, this one is the on the third place These are now. the ones that I'm using okay. regularly now. This is my <laughs> Zumba day one. <laughs> this is work. Okay. I go to work and this is uh, sometimes when I get bored of this. Oh, okay. I use that. This is what I used to use before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -mm. This one's not for me. No. Nope. It's like too coreniste. Mm -hmm. I could see that. Now you see why <laughs> I struggle with it. Because <laughs> my my strategy with perfumes is I will go to what is it Notino, mm -hmm. and I will just talk to the mm -hmm. Preda Vachka. I'm like, what would you buy for your boyfriend? <laughs> And all she gave you. Yeah, I mean, this is over the years. Mm -hmm. I like this one as well. Okay, here you go, boss. Here you 
But now I don't smell it as much. I think it's older, right? Yes. Like it's not so the first ones I. <sighs> Between the Aqua Dijon, Aqua Dijon. Yeah. yeah. This is the one that I've for a long time. I like fruity perfumes. Mm hmm. <laughs> That one is sa kind of familiar to me for some reason, but I now it doesn't. It's not mm, as powerful. Not as powerful. But still better than Tom. Yes, Barra. of course, of course. And Jimmy too was a suggestion from somebody that I never really liked it that much. On the penis. <laughs> the the pen. That's what she <laughs> said. Pen fifty. <laughs> No. No. Not strong enough. Well, so that one is the best. The Zumba one is the best. And the Aqua Dijon, uh, the one is the second best. Then is the Boss. Then is the... Yeah, switch those. Perfect. Yes. Yes. That's my postupka. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for your I'm going to have to note those two. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. And it's actually going to be discontinued soon. <gasps> so Which one? The better get on it. The one the with the, one or the big PP energy. Oh, no. Yeah. You're going to have to buy I a thousand for one. your <laughs> husband. <laughs> um, <And> for myself. <laughs> let's see. Um, yeah, we already discussed heaters. Yeah, what are the most controversial... Uh, people are talking about you... Um, as you are raising some difficult topics that people don't normally talk about, mm. uh, w women empowerment, sexuality. Mm -hmm. So what are the, the most controversial topics that you've discussed in Slovakia that other people mm. are not talking about? Well, maybe marriage problems. <laughs> maybe marriage problems is the one that I uh, kind of see as the most controversial because... When I talked about it, nobody was talking about stuff like that. Like, or at least, mm, I don't remember anyone talking about stuff like that. It that stays openly. at home. Yeah, yeah. And people, I mean, the ideal situation would be to talk about it with your partner. But my situation was, I, I, I didn't feel like I was getting heard by my partner. And... I needed to get it out, like, out of my system and talk about it. So I wrote about it. We men are bad in communication. Yes. I'm horrible we in are, arguing. We are bad as well. We communicate a lot, but we lack the right way of communicating. And men it's usually as well. is, like, n not talking at all. <laughs> yeah, I, when I argue, I don't. Yeah. I just stay quiet. Yeah, and that was so irritating to me when my then-boyfriend was like quiet it was it fueled me so it like ah uh, now now like, we got so better at talking to each other and we're not talking at each other we're really talking to each other and yeah yeah it's we're getting better it, it's a, i guess getting good at listening yes as well right also. it's hard when you have to put other people's needs ahead of yours mm -hmm. Really hard. Um, we are close to finishing because I am conscious that you are short on time. So, uh, fire round. Mm -hmm. Most toxic relationship story. Most toxic relationship story. <sighs> well, I'm going to say my toxic behavior towards my husband. Mm -hmm. Because at that point I was already kind of aware that it's toxic because when i've been toxic in the uh, toxic in the past i didn't have the capacity to understand that i was being toxic because you know you're always taught to see the fault in someone else mm -hmm. so yeah my my needs to be with him 24 7 my need to mm, for the relationship to stay as exciting as it was in the beginning my I wasn't able to understand that he needs time by himself. Yeah, this is a hard one and that I try to explain often that especially when you live together with somebody, like 
you need time for mm. yourself. Like I need time to come and do my podcast or play my yeah. games because I would go crazy. Yeah. 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 Does a uh, quick question. I saw your video on the topic and I'm curious mm-hmm. because since we discussed mm-hmm. 1015 club and <laughs> big PP energy there, does size matter? <sighs> This is a really hard one for me. That's what she said. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um this is a really hard one for me because I don't really have experience with that much of a variety of sizes so I can't really say. But you made a video on it, right? But And what were the we, conclusions? Uh, the conclusions were that for most women size does matter. Mm-hmm. Too small, too big, not Damn good it. like <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody wants the average. But there are also people who say that it doesn't matter. So I think it's very individual. It's what you do with it, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. And sometimes I think it's more even about chemistry. Exactly. And I mean, I have had sexual relations with women where there is no really? size at all. So, it I mean, it can be very nice and very perfect even without <laughs> anything mm-hmm, <laughs> to put mm-hmm, in. So... So yeah, it's it's not I, I don't really think it's about the size. I think it's about the expectations. I think it's about the chemistry and I think it's about communication and like doing what you like. Final question. Mm-hmm. Best way to overcome a breakup. Best way to overcome a breakup. Uh I think it's different for everyone. And that's how I try to answer all of my advice <laughs> questions when I'm asked like it's very individual. It's v- it depends very much on if you are the one breaking up or if you are the one being broken up with because and some people don't realize but even if you are the one initiating the breakup it's still hard on you. Mm-hmm. And that was m- a lot of times m- my case. Uh, but I think the most important thing is not to suppress the feelings but go through the pain and through the tears and through thinking oh is it the right decision is it not the right like like go through it feel it all but also surround yourself with people that you can do some hobbies with and surround yourself with people that if you need them to listen to you they will listen to you but at the same time when you need a distraction they will be your distraction and i don't know just do s- find stuff that makes you happy i've been re- giving and the wrong advice for the for my whole life i just tell guys to just bang everything that no! moves <laughs> no no <laughs> <laughs> I'm ter- I'm terrible. <laughs> Guys, what I've discovered during this because discussion is I'm toxic <laughs> as hell. <laughs> no, because you know exactly th- and this happens a lot when I often see this this pattern when people break up the women are like so sad about it and they go through the motions and then they move on and with men they move on but then it hits them. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly like you can go out and <laughs> bang everything in sight. That moves everything with a pulse. <laughs> exactly. But then it hits you. Like, oh no, we really broke up and I miss her maybe. Yeah. And yeah. Start, but then you start to just see everything with the uh, rose color glasses, right? Mm. You you forget the bad things and just think yeah. of the good things, guys. Yeah. We reach the end of our podcast. Remember that you can win some really nice things that Petush brought for you guys so just remember to write me a message on Instagram showing me that you follow her again your handle Petush Petusah Botka Naskle Very good and Be-e. and make sometimes sure that you have to write the whole thing because sometimes I'm shadow banned <laughs> <laughs> happens from time to time oh, shadow bans you Instagram why mm, sometimes mm, I don't know sometimes it happens when I get some content reported because of a racy picture? Not really. So N- then what's there wrong was with one, there was just one racy picture ever removed mm. from stories and I agree that looked more than it was. But I've been on Instagram long enough to know that there is But some crazy shit there. <laughs> exactly. But and this this oh, it got me so mad because I I got shadow banned and I got this warning that 
if I do it again, uh, my account might get removed. I shared a picture from the, the this site called Inside History. Mm -hmm. So it's a historic picture of a girl fighting in a war and she was caught and she got hanged. And it was a picture where she stood before she got hanged and the 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 text was um interesting. So I shared it and it was removed from my stories for I don't know, uh telling people to commit suicide or something like that. But the original post is still up. So that's what I don't get like doesn't make any sense to me, but okay. I, it doesn't make sense. Resharing historical <laughs> pictures. It doesn't make sense to me at all. But anyway, uh, Petush, I would definitely like to extend a future invitation for you to come back to the podcast. I would love to. I really enjoyed your time being here, and I hope people got to see um, the American I, side of yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> the good side of you. <laughs> <laughs> and people got really to appreciate you because, as, as I said, uh, from from first impression i was completely yeah. wrong yeah. and <laughs> i think uh from doing research on you there's so many things to be proud of thank you and thank you i hate much. that they defined you in which is one topic which yeah. is completely unfair so i want to have you again there's still a ton of questions that we need to discuss yeah. <laughs> um thank you so much for thank you before we leave could you please leave the audience your followers with a good message for them about life go to anything. therapy <laughs> that's my no go to therapy if you feel like it because it's not for everyone it's hard um that's what she and said just be nice to <laughs> it's be nice to people like don't do stuff to others that you don't want done to yourself mm. and try to put yourself in other people's shoes and just be nice it's not that hard <laughs> and spend more time working on yourself than you do looking at others and criticizing others like makes a huge difference <laughs> thank you so much thank you as well guys thank you make sure you subscribe and i'm looking forward to your messages Nasclick. oh yeah that's yeah my, that's my greeting Nasclick. but also talk about your podcast so people know my podcast nagauchi's nasclay yeah sheesh <laughs> and how people can find it on yeah, youtube yeah, right they Who can find it as nagauchi's nascle or nagauchi or nascle when is the next episode the next episode is gonna be probably this sunday but it's just half of the episode because i started doing only fans version with intimate questions and answers you have an only fans Yes, I started. Yeah, we, we need yeah. a second uh, <laughs> podcast to discuss it. Yeah, but only for the podcast. Many people are disappointed that it's just two girls talking about intimate stuff and not showing intimate stuff. But I think I want to talk openly about things. And I think OnlyFans is the perfect platform to do that. Yeah. And they won't yeah. shadow ban you for sure. Exactly. Exactly. Once again, and they won't demonetize me. Very good. Once again, <laughs> thank you so much for being thank here. You. And guys, thank you once again. Have a nice one. Nice Take care. The Blue Nuts. <laughs>